So what is macroanalysis and why does it matter? Uh, these are the key things and Julie and I both feel passionately about the world of macro. Macro really is looking at the top-down view of the world based about how economies move, the macroeconomic variables that drive asset prices. Now, if you don't believe me, you can just look at a chart like the ISM, which is the Institute of Supply Managers Survey, which goes up and down and basically tracks GDP, but it's on a monthly basis and GDP is quarterly. Now, why does that matter? Why do we care about where the economy goes in the US, for example? It's because when you put asset prices against it, asset prices move with economies. And that's kind of obvious, but most people misunderstand that, is if the economy is doing well, then asset prices do well. When economies do badly, asset prices do badly. So understanding where economies are going is crucial. Now, the problem is, is the world is not an isolated world of just one economy. Yes, the US is the most important economy, but there is a whole number of other macro variables, how other countries are doing, and the interrelationships between those countries. That's what drives exchange rates, interest rates, it drives equity prices, it drives the opportunity. Should I be invested in emerging markets? Should I be buying gold? Should I be buying metals or industrial commodities or oil? Or should I be selling them? These are all macro things. You know, whether Netflix does better on a quarter, that's not macro, that's a micro variable. And Julian and I are less interested in that, but when things get extreme or there's turning points, that's when macro matters, because it is the biggest driver of portfolio returns over time. It's just that most people don't understand it because it's complex, it requires homework, analysis, and a broad understanding of the world, and it's easier to try and punt a stock based on a chart and, a, and the potential for some news flow. But that is not really what builds long-term investment opportunity. That's the key thing about what macro is and why it's important. And I think if you, and you and I know this, Raoul, if you go back and look at history and you track macro returns in purely specialized, dedicated hedge fund space, you will see that macro returns are the greatest at these inflection points. Correct. Because macro sort of sits underneath the surface of these longer term trends. And at key points though, bursts out. And it's the culmination of these extended periods of growth that eventually lead to some breakout in inflation and an offsetting move either by the central bank or the bond market, which create major turning points in these other asset classes. Because you look, you can watch CNBC and the guys, some of the guys that come on there are very, very good at predicting what, as, my, as Raul said, what Microsoft is gonna do versus say Netflix, and that's fantastic. But the point is, is we've had friends and I've got friends who've sat in big equity shops and their only job is to track the macro within the equity space so that at the inflection point where definitionally everyone is as maximum long equities that they can be, that there is someone within that shop looking at it and saying, I don't care if you're all long and you all think these, go these things are going up, the whole market is turning now because the central bank is gonna to have to be reactive to the inflation and the growth that it's been generated and the whole market is going down. So I'm gonna trade that trend. Yeah, and also, you know, these turning points, because of the very nature of the behavior of market participants, generally at turning points, most people are the wrong way at the wrong time. And you find that the returns that get driven from that shift so it's that turning over of the economy or turning up of the economy, whichever economy we're talking about, whichever macro opportunity, the moves tend to be ultra violent. Yes. Huge volatility. And that means if you get them right, the ability to generate massively outsized returns at those points are extremely high. Right. You constantly see people talking on the TV or reading in the newspaper. You'll see, oh, this number came out. Oh, this is what happened. This is why it was important. Well, what Raoul and I are trying to do is actually forecast that number and see far enough ahead that you're ready and prepared for those movements in the market. Reacting to data is pointless. Predicting data, predicting trends in markets is where you make the value. Yeah, I mean, for example, just a very simple idea that Julian and I will both agree with is the fact that Unless you understand macro, you don't understand this is the second longest economic cycle the US has ever seen Correct. currently. 
So if you understand the probability frameworks that you have to use in macro, and that's not you know, a precise statistical thing, it's understanding that this cycle is gonna end relatively soon. Could it be the longest cycle ever? Possibly. It's less likely because the Fed are raising interest rates and there's a number of structural headwinds that may stop it going much further. But the point being is once you're armed with that information, you know that a tipping point is coming closer. Right. So your radar is up for that. At other points, let's say after the 1998 Asian crisis, what you're looking for is the opportunity to get long right. those assets that nobody wanted, which was things like the Asian stock markets. And that was a huge driver of returns for the next 10 years. So it's not necessarily a bearish bias or a bullish bias. Right now, we tend to be on the bearish side because it's the end of a cycle. But there may be a bullish side on the agricultural cycle or some of the commodity cycles as we get later into those. I mean, gold is another one that, you know, the cycle has been dampened over a period of time and maybe at some point soon is the opportunity on the upside. So it's looking at those upside and downside opportunities because as we talked about, those turning points, that's where you make all the money. And I think this is this something else that really distinguishes, and Mal's hinted at this, when you have come to the world with a macro thought process. And that is, in macro, you can make money on both being long something and short something. So it gives you a much more balanced view. If you look at a lot of equity commentary, if you look at a lot of equity publications, their biggest returns occur in long trending up moves. They don't make a lot of money. They don't make a lot of money for their clients. They don't have a lot of readers when things turn down. We're agnostic to that. I'm quite happily to surf a long bull market in the US equity market, but I want to be out at a point when I think the cycle is turning. I don't want to be max committed, which almost always all this other advice advice is essentially in, in these cycles. To us, that turning point, that point where things really start to change is significant, is the most value. And this is what we try and do in Macro Insiders for you. We try and add value in using our depth of experience, our understanding, and both of us scouring the world for every opportunity to show you, okay, look, this is where we think the world's going. This is where we could be wrong. And here are the opportunities that you can make money from. We'll specifically recommend trade ideas to you. And we'll also spend our time going through the framework so you can find your own ideas within it. We're kind of doing the homework for you. We're not there to manage your portfolios. That's ridiculous. What we want to do is empower you with the ability to manage your own portfolios and to make money from the macro environment. Once you understand that macro, you'll be able to take more intelligent single stock risks too, because you'll say, okay, should I be buying this sector or that sector and which particular stock within it? And that's the crucial thing that we bring to you. It's really there, we're your resource in the macro world to help guide you through it and show you, look, here's the great opportunity here, or here's the huge risk there.